From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. We are pre-security, which is fantastic, which means that everybody in Portland, regardless of whether or not you're flying, can come out, grab a drink, grab a bite to eat, uh, enjoy this amazing view that we have of the airfield. So cool. It is finally here, the opening day for Portland International Airport's new main terminal. One of the best parts, you don't need a plane ticket to see the new space and try the new restaurants. Welcome to The Good Stuff. I'm Christine Podawanich. Our China Green shows us what's cooking at PDX. The new terminal has nearly 20 shops and restaurants, some new, some you already know and love, and every one of them is a local brand. They're opening in two phases. The first group of shops and restaurants open today, and the second group will make their debut in early 2026 when the project wraps up. Before Security Checkpoint, showstopper restaurant and bar Loyal Legion on the mezzanine level. This is their third Portland area location. We will have 96 beers on tap. We are pre-security, which is fantastic, which means that everybody in Portland, regardless of whether or not you're flying, can come out, grab a drink, grab a bite to eat, uh, enjoy this amazing view that we have of the airfield, uh, watch planes come and go, and just really come and enjoy the new terminal. Also before security checkpoint, Portland Coffee Roasters, Hello from Portland, Missionary Chocolate, Orox Leather Goods, Country Cat, and Piff. This is their second Portland location. Greeting cards and also books and journals all of our cards are written or designed by women, and we also have organic travel sundries, magazines, so many great things. Past security, Columbia Sportswear and Powell's Books, and many food spots that make their food in-house. They're not shipping in frozen food here. Blue Star Donuts, making donuts on-site. Grasa, making pasta by hand, and oven and shaker, making pizza in the kitchen, among other local favorites. And don't you worry, PDX is keeping their street pricing policy, so you'll pay the same prices at the airport as you do in local shops. China Green, KGW News. That's very cool that they're keeping the pricing the same, and you may have spotted the roof in China's story. It is huge, and it's pretty cool. We're talking 18 million pounds of a nine-acre mass timber roof, all that wood, sourced within 300 miles, including some from local tribes. And throughout the airport, you'll find more than 70 trees and some 5,000 plants. Travelers today were understandably pretty excited. Honestly, the ceilings are beautiful. I mean, we feel almost outdoors, right? It's just open and airy and not congested or claustrophobic at all. I've been waiting to see this thing unveiled and it's, it's impressive. I like it. It's that Pacific Northwest vibe. Pacific Northwest vibe. I love it. You know, very impressive what we're seeing today, but it's only two thirds of the full main terminal that's planned. The project had to be broken up into two phases so that the airport could keep functioning during construction. The new area associated with phase two is expected to open in early 2026. So the new terminal, not the only place with some gorgeous greenery on tonight's Pacific Storyland. We are visiting a very special garden, a place that's thriving thanks to friendship and a shared passion for growing beauty in the face of adversity. Our Catherine Cook and photographer Nick Bieber take us there. Since the beginning of time, there have always been gardens, life-giving, soothing places of beauty where stories are shared. Well, hello, beautiful Kay. And friends are received. How are you, my friend? Hi, so good to see you. On this day, it's time to pick flowers. Isn't that just incredible? With Kay Thomas. We love it. We're like, the party's starting. Rosie <laughs> Sullivan owns N&M Herb Nursery in Hubbard. Agastache is probably the number one pollinator. Rosie and her friend Carol Atherton met Kay a few years ago. I am a gardener. She's a gardener. A common thread amid uncommon circumstances. I have never met anyone with ALS until I met Kay. Kay has been living with ALS for 22 years. The average life expectancy after diagnosis is two to five years. Now 67. Kay relies on a ventilator to breathe. She can't speak on her own, but her mind is sharp. She has a design in her head. She knows what she wants. I don't think you have any of this variety. For Kay, one bite means yes, 
Two bites so we'll mean no. When the shopping is done, it's home to Battleground and Kay's Garden. You will be inspired. A place where Carol and Rosie have served as Kay's hands, along with Kay's husband, Phil. She has completely designed and picked out the flowers, placed the flowers, so this truly is her garden. Phil and Kay moved here in 2019. Their garden then, just a big empty field. Phil built this boardwalk pathway, and he's dug more than a few holes for Kay. She's a tough cookie. <laughs> and she changes her mind, so if we plant something and then we need to move it, I, gotta, I shake my head at times, but you know, she's the boss. Kay and Phil have been married 22 years. Both are Army veterans. Kay was diagnosed with ALS just weeks after their honeymoon. Phil has never left her side. What do you do? Do you surrender to it? Or do you choose to do the best you can given the circumstances? And Kay has been a fighter all her life. I refuse to be defined by my disease. At home, Kay uses a special computer controlled by eye movement. It gives a voice to her gratitude. If it weren't for the many hands that make my ideas become a reality, my lovely gardens would only be a dream for me. For Carol, helping Kay is healing. Five years ago, she lost her husband, John. His love for gardening is now Carol's, and she shares it with Kay. What she does for me, I'm going to cry right now. It's just, it brings me absolute Joy. She's just an extraordinary human being. Without those two, I would be lost in my gardens barren. I look out at my gardens and flowers and see beauty, personal satisfaction, and accomplishment. Phil sees beauty, too. My wife has been good-looking to me in my eyes for 22 years. So the flowers are a bonus. In Battleground, Catherine Cook, KGW News. What a beautiful story, a beautiful garden too. And hey, as Catherine said in her story, since the beginning of time, right, there have always been gardens. So that got us curious about your dream garden. On social media, we asked you to share with us a picture of a garden that you love. There are lots of beautiful ones in Oregon and Washington. First, let's get to one from Katie who shared a photo of her mom's garden in Tualatin. Looks like a variety of flowers there. Everything's so lush, I love the all those colors as well. Judy sent in this photo of a garden in Columbia City with lots of solar lights, cosmos, snapdragons, lots of variety. It'd be nice to just sit there and relax at the end of the day. Next up, Kathleen shared her husband's garden in Oak Grove. If you look closely, you can see some of the plants actually going up onto the roof there, <laughs> growing strong and healthy, it looks like. And wow, looking like a bit of a fairy tale here. Laurel sent in a picture of her sister's garden in Corbett. Imagine Imagining, you know, afternoon tea with your best friends, of course, that cute pup surrounded by flowers, kind of Alice in Wonderland-esque. And last but not least, someone got a little creative with art. <laughs> we appreciate the effort, pretty in a very um, minimalist way, I guess, but thank you for sending that one into us. As always, you can share your photos and stories of good stuff happening in your community by texting the number there on your screen. That is 503-226-5088, or you can always email us at thegoodstuff at kgw.com. It's huge, because like I so said, I went two years being told this would never happen, and now we're here. Still ahead on the good stuff, a deputy sheriff accomplishing what doctors said was impossible, returning to full-time duty after a serious injury. His story of resiliency when we return.
Welcome back. We are headed to Washington County to follow a sheriff's deputy's long road to recovery. He now has the green light to return to duty full time after he survived a terrible car crash. Devin Haskins shares the story of how he defied the odds. It's been a long road to recovery to get to where Mike Trotter is today. He's still in pain and says that pain comes and goes and probably always will. And there was a point where I had extensive nerve damage in my right hand where I lost a lot of function in my right hand too. And fortunately that has healed and come back. Um, I'm sure I'll still deal with pain in my right arm for the rest of my life. Robocop. Today, he wears a brace on his lower left leg that gives him the mobility to do his job. Takes the strength of my core and my upper leg and converts that into strength into my lower leg to help help me move and run and get around. Can I get a, a large vanilla chai? When I first met Deputy Trotter in January of 2023, more than seven months after the crash. Okay, thank you. Even walking was painful. His words about what happened speak volumes about his recovery. Like I've been at hundreds of those crashes and I don't, I don't know how I'm alive. It was the early hours of April 27th, 2022. Trotter was responding to a call about a drunk driver. Moments later, a different drunk driver crashed into the driver's side of his patrol car. Five teenagers were inside the car. Two of them died. The driver of that car pled guilty last year and was sentenced to 25 years in jail. The crash? left Trotter in the hospital for 41 days. He spent months in physical therapy, working to prove doctors wrong that he'd never work as a sheriff's deputy again. And he did. Last winter, he got back to work in a modified duty role. It just really helps with the mental health to get out of the house and be back to like functioning and doing something, not just sitting around recovering all day. And in mid-July, doctors and his department gave him the all clear to return back to work full time. He had done what many thought he wouldn't do. It's, it's huge because like so I went two years being told this would never happen and now we're here. Again, that was Devin Haskins reporting. Deputy Trotter is working on some special assignments right now before he starts patrolling Washington County's streets again in March. An East Portland nonprofit being recognized for its efforts in helping people recover. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley chose Cultivate Initiatives to highlight at his annual Multnomah County Town Hall. The group works with people who are homeless and helps them find work and housing. It also provides mobile shower services, among many other things. And as part of the recognition, Merkley gave the organization an American flag that has flown over the U.S. Capitol. Coming up on The Good Stuff, turning concrete into canvas. How a Portland neighborhood is revitalizing public spaces through art. That's after the break.
If you talk to anyone in this district, they would also share the enthusiasm that we're all feeling for the future of the Central East Side. Portland's Central East Side neighborhood has seen its share of challenges over the past few years, and now people in that community are working to brighten things up a bit, this time with a new public art space where the streets become the canvas. Alma McCarty takes us on a tour of the mural district. On Southeast Madison, underneath the bridge. We always had this vision for the Central East Side being a mural district. Creatives in Portland saw a canvas. It's creating a sense of community and bringing life to this place that uh, hasn't been done in a long time. A space once dark and dreary, now full of bright color. This really just celebrates that work that we can all enjoy. A very low barrier, in fact, no barrier at all. In true Portland fashion Friday night, cyclists gathered to celebrate the Avenue of Murals, commissioned by the Central East Side Industrial Council. My personal favorite is the train that's right here behind us. We're, we've all been stopped by a train at some point in the Central East Side, so I kind of love that one. Caroline Holcomb is executive director. We're definitely on the upswing right now, and there's been a lot of positive movement. I think if you talk to anyone in this district, they would also share the enthusiasm that we're all feeling for the future of the Central East Side. Tiffany Conklin with Portland Street Art Alliance on board with the transformation. And activate the spaces with public art is one of the best ways to just not, you know, only liven up the actual physical space, but to engage people and to get more people to come down here and come to the bars and restaurants and participate in the neighborhood. I think that we're sort of coming out of our shell right now a little bit. And as Keith Jones explains, these efforts fit into an even bigger picture down the road. Uh, Green Loop is a six mile linear park that we're building around the city as part of the Central City 2035 plan and it encompasses all of Central City. Friday's ride, a glimpse of what's to come. It's about getting people out into the Portland neighborhoods and rediscovering their city maybe and what makes it special. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Love all those bright colors. There are 18 total murals on each of the columns on Southeast Madison. This is under the overpasses that lead to the Hawthorne Bridge. And organizers are looking to add additional artwork to create even more of a destination. Hey, a quick reminder that the KGW School Supply Drive happening right now. One of the best ways you can help is to give online. We have made it super easy. All you have to do is go to kgw.com slash school, then click donate cash. All this week, for every dollar donated at any On Point branch, they will be donating $5. We want to thank On Point Community Credit Union, Safeway, and Rick's Custom Fencing for everything they're doing to help make this year's school supply drive a big success. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. For the first time in nearly two decades, Providence Concerts will be back to its stadium. And what better way to kick things off than with the Foo Fighters this Friday? Providence Park shared a time-lapse video showing crews transforming the field into a concert space. There's added seating to expand the stadium's capacity to 30,000 seats. That is about 10,000 more than Moda Center. This is now a venue that will allow tours to stop here in Portland on their way from California to Seattle. Most often tours were just bypassing Portland in the past. So this really gives us an opportunity to attract some of those shows that wouldn't have come to Portland in the past. If you want to watch the Foo Fighters perform this Friday, general admission tickets for the pit area are still available. After that, the next concert will be Green Day on September 25th with special guests, the Smashing Pumpkins. Love that. And if concerts aren't really your jam, see what I did there? <laughs> we've got a couple other events happening this weekend that may be more up your alley. First up, we've got the second annual Pacifica and Asian American Community Science Night. That's happening at OMSI this Friday. It's a family-friendly event for people of all ages. There will be planetarium shows, science demonstrations, delicious food. Tickets are $8 for children, $10 for adults. And if you have time this Saturday, check out the PDX Adult Soapbox Derby. Since the summer of 1997, this event brings thousands of people together, all watching costumed riders, zooming down in all kinds of cars with quirky designs like beer, a cup of noodles on their carts, you name it. It's at the Mount Tabor Park and it is free. And if you want to keep the fun rolling on along on Saturday, consider stopping by Multnomah Days in Multnomah Village. One of Portland's oldest street fairs returns from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. this Saturday only and will feature over 120 vendors, a parade and even live music. The event is free to attend and a great option for a weekend family outing. For more weekend inspiration, you can check out our Eight Things to Do article up each week on KGW.com. That is all the time that we've got tonight on The Good Stuff. As always, we appreciate you being here. We'll leave you with this shot from our Chinook Wind Sky Cam out of Lincoln City. If it's coming up, there it is. <laughs> A beautiful sunset, getting ready to set anyway. Blue skies, ocean water, loving it. We hope to see you right back here, same time, same place, tomorrow night. Have a great evening. Sure.